Aloha! Welcome to Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We are your hosts. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome to today's show. The goal of this show is to provide professional and personal development tools and profound insights on how to achieve success in life, career and or business. Dolores Presley, international keynote, motivational speaker and executive life coach, was our guest on our last show and her words of wisdom can be accessed on Newman Consulting Services website, newmanconsultingservices.com or our landing page, danelia.org. Our topic today is keys to a smooth military transition. Military members in Hawaii account for an estimated 20% of the population. So this transitioning subject is very important for our state. Joining us today as our honored guest is Vanessa Perez, CEO of S3 Career Consulting. Thank you for joining us today, Vanessa. Thanks, John. Great to see you, yeah, Vanessa. It's great to be back. Thank All you so much right. for inviting well, me. Well, I'll just piggyback on what you said. You were here before, and we had such a wonderful time, we had to bring you back again. Oh, thanks so All much. All right. <laughs> All right, Vanessa, please share with our viewers, if you would, uh, a little about S3. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, what prompted you to start that career and, you know, what was the pivoting moment in that? I, uh, I started S3, uh, S3 Career Consulting, I just call it S3. I started mm -hmm. about three years ago and mm -hmm. um, one of the key reasons I did that is because I wanted to uh, provide my knowledge and experience in helping veterans prepare for successful transition. Mm -hmm. So it's a great topic that you've got me in to talk about today. It's a shame mm -hmm. it's only 20 minutes I could talk for hours. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you understand that, that I'm right. a vet. I'm a 27-year uh, retired vet. So Thank you for your service. I've been where you are and oh, uh, I was a part of where this is a, a, a topic that's dear to me. Yes. Okay. And dear to me. Yes, absolutely. Well, because you were in the military as well, right, in Australia. I was. Yes. Back okay. in Australia. I served 23 years in the Australian Defence Force, mm -hmm. um, Army specifically. Okay. and. Uh, for 19 of those years, I served within Special Operations Command, mm -hmm. and uh, which makes some of the things that I do a little bit unconventional <laughs> sometimes, but they work. Oh, yeah. So that's Vanessa, what it's, all about. it's funny because you know you and I we we've, we've become friends, and uh, you know to see you now and then, I saw a picture of you when you were in uniform. I thought, whoa, you're a tough broad. <laughs> Don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, notice the term <laughs> down in Australia, broad is okay, but <laughs> to call a person we call a person oh. broad here in America, it's not too. Oh, oh so sorry about that. Yeah. Even though I've lived here 35 years, I'm still using Australian terminology and when I'm around other Australians, it just, it just blows right out. out. That's, that's, that's right. the only time. When she gets around other Australians, it takes me a week to understand. <laughs> you know, because so how difficult was it to transition into the civil sector for you? I suppose I come from a bit of a unique position. Um, majority of the service that I provided to the military in Australia, I was a reservist. So for 17 mm -hmm. of those 23 years, I was a reservist. So I had my own career. Mm -hmm. So transitioning really wasn't an issue. I had mm -hmm. my military career and I had my civilian career. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and for my primary civilian career, I employed people. I recruited, mm -hmm. I hired, I managed, I trained people. Mm -hmm. um, and I was a recruiter for Juan Camano Regiment for 15 years. Mm -hmm. So I recruited Special Forces operators mm -hmm. and some of the best in Australia, actually. Mm -hmm. And so, but when I did come to transition, I was actually serving six years active duty. We call it full time in Australia. Mm -hmm. So the last six years, I was full time. So mm -hmm. that transition, unique again, because for me it was packing up, mm -hmm. um, renting out the house, and moving to another whole country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I suppose the so um, it's not a traditional kind of transition mm -hmm. that we would see most times mm -hmm. where people serve 15 mm -hmm. or you know 10 or 20 years and mm -hmm. then they transition into a new career. Mm -hmm. So I suppose I was always part of the civilian community, the mm -hmm. civilian workforce. Mm -hmm. And that's the expertise that I bring to the table now mm -hmm. in preparing veterans yeah. for successful transition. Because I know what I want to see as an employer. Yeah. Um, I know how I want people to be presented. Yeah. And I use that knowledge to prepare veterans now. Mm -hmm. That's um, great. Yeah. And one of the key things, you veterans, uh, we open up to veterans. And you can understand where right. they're coming from yeah. and you can share with them and they're willing to listen right. because you've been there right. uh, and uh, that's that's one of the key things that that helps 
to make a transition. Right. Uh, and one of the things that the military, I'm pretty sure they're working on now, yeah. uh, you know, 27 years ago, almost 30 years ago when I was there, the transition process was, thank you Probably very Probably non-existent, yeah. right? Well, yeah. well, it was there, but, you know, it was, you, you had a wonderful career, and we wish yeah. you the best, you yeah. know. Yeah, easy discharge and, paperwork, yeah, see you later. And <laughs> give you the salute. And the thing is, what you're doing is so profound because the military and the civilian sector is like day and night. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the key things is when you go through the military, you learn so much. Right. And, and you have so much to bring to the table. Yep. It's just how you present it. Mm -hmm. and, right. and presentation is one of the key things here. It is. It really so, is. And the translation. And yeah. the translation. Absolutely. So working with uh, military to civilian transition trainers, we'll move right yeah. into that, yeah. uh, share with us some of the challenges that you experience you know, right. with the personnel uh, making that transition from the, the military into the civilian sector, if you would. Thanks. Um, so I was actually a military to civilian career transition trainer, mm -hmm. um, and that was really my first job mm -hmm. in the right. U.S. And so soon after I got here, I, we started our family, and we're, mm -hmm. you know, thrilled that we had Henry. And then yeah. my first job once he was moving into preschool was mm -hmm. this job. And I worked, um, it, it was a contracting job um, mm -hmm. for the Department of Labor, mm -hmm. um, Transition Readiness Program, essentially mm -hmm. we call mm -hmm. TAP or GPS program. And I delivered that across pretty much all of the bases in Hawaii and I loved it. I like, mm -hmm. talk about finding a dream job, yeah. you know, for me to be able to share, um, you know, this insight and these skills and the things that yeah. veterans need to do now to be prepared and marketable in this mm -hmm. career marketplace um, was a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but one of the things that I started to realise after, I did it for two years, but I was really realising that um, as much as we invest in that program and as much mm -hmm. as people who work with it yeah. are committed to it and work their hardest, yeah. it's out of date. Yes. The reality is, we, it's a ten, yeah. it, the program is 10 years old yeah. mm. um, and my view is, unconventional as it is, yeah. that the program is preparing our veterans for a job market that doesn't exist yes. anymore. Mm -hmm. So the pivot point. Hold a minute. Mm -hmm. What you just said was very profound. Mm -hmm. It is a job market that doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Can you expand that, please? Well, and this is where I bring in a little bit of unconvention unconventional yeah, right. thought mm -hmm. here. Um, and, and I know what I do works because mm -hmm. it's worked for yes. you know the thousands of veterans that I've worked with or trained or coached. Um, we are placing a lot of emphasis on paper resumes and veterans having to write them themselves mm -hmm. and trolling through online job boards. Mm -hmm. You know, I come in with a different perspective altogether. Mm -hmm. You know, the conversation of branding and marketing needs to happen um, if we're to prepare mm -hmm. our military veterans mm -hmm. for a successful transition, or any job seeker, to mm -hmm. be honest. Mm -hmm. okay. We need to start thinking about how we present ourselves, mm -hmm. how we brand and market ourselves. How, how do we differentiate ourselves from the other competition in the market, mm -hmm. from the other 350 veterans, 350,000 veterans who are transitioning this year? Right. How do I make myself different, stand out? How do I make myself and my expertise appealing mm -hmm. to a civilian employer? Mm -hmm. And how do they how do they understand what it is that I have to offer? Right. How do they how do they get the value of that? And that's part of the tr the translation, um, and how important that is. So, um, I flip it all together, and I start talking to people about branding and marketing. I mm -hmm. want veterans to have business cards now. Mm -hmm. I want them to have a pocket of business cards 12 months before they transition, mm -hmm. and they start net professionally networking with everybody. Every contractor yeah. in the office that they work with, mm -hmm. they should know who they are, who they work for, what are they, what mm -hmm. are they doing, right? right? And growing their network um, now, 12 months before they get You know, out. that's so critical, Vanessa, because, you know, even when John retired too, I mean, you know, just getting the focus of, look, you're not in the military, you won't be in the military anymore. We've got to start thinking now about, you know, what are we going to do? We already had a business set up, so it wasn't a challenge, but it's just all the little things that you, that you think about, you know, military personnel are basically told what to wear, you know, right down to the underwear. And so, you know, even slight change of getting out and having to change the daily routine, it's very, very stressful, right. let alone <coughs> a job and where am I going to live and right. am I going to buy a house or am I not, you know, and I haven't thought about buying a house yet. Right. You know, all of those come into, 
into play. So what you're offering is just so critical yeah. to reduce, to help with that whole stress level that you go through retiring. It makes a difference. And you're right. When, when veterans transition, they're not yeah. just changing jobs. Yeah. They're changing states, countries, yes. homes. Yes. They have no source of income once they leave, you yes. know, for many, um, yes. when we talk junior enlisted. And, yeah. and the reality is that, you know, once we get to senior levels, we usually have about 12 months to 18 months to actually prepare for that transition. Right. For a lot of junior enlisted, and this is when I started my business, mm -hmm. and we had the drawdown a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. I would have 40 people in a class, mm -hmm. junior Marines sometimes, mm -hmm. who had less than three months yeah. before they had no job, right. no salary, no right. home. Right. Yeah, no they're not financial preparing. fat in the bank. Yeah, they're not preparing. Yeah. So So true. It was a it was a it was a time where I thought I know how to bridge the gap here between what they're learning mm -hmm. and what they actually need. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the main mm -hmm. reasons I started my business. Mm -hmm. And um, um, it does make a difference right. when people look at it a different way. Well, you and know, what we, oh, sorry, and what we need to do the military well, what the military you know, every, my humble opinion, uh, you're taught so well. The training is the best in the world that you get. You can't get any better training. Yeah. But the focus should be not only on your job in the military, it's when you leave the military. Mm -hmm. And they need to focus on it a little sooner. Mm -hmm. And that would that's mm -hmm. where, you know, if I had to uh, right. uh, add anything to the pie, right. it's how soon you do it, you know. Mm -hmm. Because as you said, three months before you get out is not enough time mm -hmm. to think about a successful transition in the civil sector. Mm -hmm. So you need, and, and I was fortunate because I had a lot of uh, older individuals that I dealt with taught me and said, hey, look, this is, this is just a chapter in your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once this chapter is over, you've got a new book you're about to start. Right. So you need to start transitioning. Uh, we started transitioning maybe three, four years right. uh, mm -hmm. before, yes. before I got out of the military. It's, and that made it so easy. Yes. It was like sticking your finger in a bucket of water and mm -hmm. taking it out. Boom, it was nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it was no riffle and, and things. The only challenge I had as the New York fan is <laughs> I wore a blue shirt and blue pair of pants, light blue shirt, dark blue pants. And I just didn't know what to put on, you know. <laughs> I would come out with a green oh, shirt. And, 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 you, <laughs> you know, know how to hey, dress. No, well, and my, my son would say, Dad, you can't wear that. <laughs> <laughs> you got to change that. I say, if it's comfortable, I'm, I'm wearing it, you know. Well, I, you know, for most military personnel, the career transition process is as much about self-education right. as it is about finding a job. So approximately 50% of the people who leave the military to pursue civilian, un, uh, civilian employment yep end up working for companies unknown to them um, when their search began and they accept positions from companies that they know very little right. about and part of that is because they're only just leaving three months to kind of get out and they're panicking and grabbing whatever comes along which can really affect them even more for the rest of their lives, right? <clears throat> it's critical. It, planning, yes. it's all about planning. Yes. You know, we, we are such great planners in the military, but we fail to actually think strategically mm -hmm. about our career change. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that you said three to four years out. I believe now in recruit courses, mm -hmm. they're starting to plant the seed now to say, mm -hmm. start thinking about your transition now. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do once you once you leave, whether it's four years or eight years time? Mm -hmm. and, and my strategy is always for active duty now to get prepared three and four years mm -hmm. before. So exactly right. not, not, not start to plan your transition mm -hmm. a year out, but three years out. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting that you would say that m most people would transition and not know, have ever heard of the company they work for. Mm -hmm. I did a little bit of searching and there are about 28 million businesses in the mm -hmm. US alone, yeah. right? So nobody could ever know all of the businesses. Yeah. So, and, and consider now, the, the career marketplace is a global mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. You can connect with, engage with, and shape opportunities across the globe now. So yeah. you, That's, yeah. you, you, really, your really span for opportunity something. is massive. Yeah. And really, if people start being strategic about their career change or their mm -hmm. job search, um, they should start growing their networks broadly Mm -hmm. um, they can grow their networks based on location, mm -hmm. find all the chief executives within the commute radius mm -hmm. of where you want to live, mm -hmm. um, or 
connect with chief executives within organisations or industries that appeal to you or interest you. Mm -hmm. And it's really fascinating that the world becomes your oyster when so you start true. thinking about this. We've got to take a break. Uh, this is Keys to Success on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We're talking with Vanessa Perez, CEO of S3 Career Consulting. I'm Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Please stay tuned because we'll be back in a minute. Have a great day. Aloha, my name is John Waihe, and I used to be a part of all the things that you might be angry at. I served in government here and may have made decisions that affects you. So I want to invite you in. I want to invite you in to Talk Story with me and some very special guests every other Monday here at Talk Story with John Wahee. Come on in, join us, express your opinion, learn more about your state, and then do something about it. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Keys to Success on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We encourage you to call our hotline at 415-871-2474 to join our conversation or tweet us at thinktechhi if you have any questions or comments. We've been talking with Vanessa Perez, CEO of S3 Career Consulting, about keys to smooth military transition. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and as I said, I'm another half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome back to the show. And welcome back, Vanessa. Thanks, John. Yes. Yes. Great sure. to be here. Sorry I had okay. to cut you off, but you know, okay. we've got to take the break. That's okay. <laughs> All right. You just need to say, just be quiet. With <laughs> yes. Okay, Vanessa, we mentioned earlier that uh, our military personnel is about 20%, an estimated 20% right. of our population here yeah. on the islands. Yeah. So, in your opinion, mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel uh, that, uh, that transition affects the economy here on? Hawaii. You know, it's a, it's a great point to bring up and we know that our little magical island's quite unique in, in the scheme of the military. Um, we have all <coughs> services represented, all yes. within like a short driving yes, distance, right, which is very unique. Yes. Um, we have probably around about 130, 140,000 active duty yes. um, on the island and non-serving military community. We have more than a hundred thousand mm -hmm. you know it's a significant percentage of yeah. our environment here um i'm working with some really phenomenal innovative um military veterans who've recently transitioned and realized that they didn't really feel ready for what we need to undertake so mm -hmm. they've created this really innovative <coughs> Um, council they call Master Seeds, the Military Aloha State Economic and Retention Council. Mm -hmm. um, and they appeared on Reg Baker's uh, show last week. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, um, cutting edge stuff. And they've come up with these numbers that are really significant. I don't think they've ever been captured before. Um, when we compare veterans in transition on the mainland, on average, 33% of those veterans are retained within the state. Mm -hmm. So that they stay, they settle down once they leave, and then they contribute to the business economy of mm -hmm. that, that state. The numbers here, like we always knew that the majority of veterans will leave and go back to the yes. mainland. Um, yeah, many want to go and see their families, mm -hmm. many want to re return and, you know, go to businesses over there. But mm -hmm. when, I, when I talk to veterans about would they like to stay? Most, they do. a large percentage would like to stay here yes. if they felt confident that they would transition into a successful, meaningful correct. job yes. that allows them to afford the cost of living here yes. mm -hmm. correct. for them and their families. Correct. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, Hawaii retains 3% mm. of our veteran population. Mm. There's so much potential mm -hmm. to shape the opportunity to give the veterans the confidence to be able to transition mm -hmm. into, s swiftly transition into meaningful employment yes. and then bolster this economy here. Yes. And so the great thing about the Master Council is that they have started those conversations now with mm -hmm. the 
industry leaders, with businesses, with the community, with the you know the veteran service organisations, mm -hmm. and with the community leaders. And it's really exciting mm -hmm. to see what's happening. That's great. And we'd like to see. Hawaii retaining 33% yeah. of veterans to help with well, our economy. It certainly would give more skilled uh, employees for businesses here because we're looking for skilled individuals. Now, what, there's, there's something else. There's an elephant sitting in the room here. Uh, is that a fat joke? <laughs> well, it could be, but I don't think so. This is, this is a serious joke. Sorry. Because we have, we have uh, such a thing as called the brain drain here. The young kids that go away to college, I mean the right. smart kids, they right. can't come back here and get a job because it's not only about being uh, uh, able to, to, to take a job and do a job. The jobs have to be here. Right. And the jobs on here, our son, as one, he's a computer engineer. He's in Manhattan. He couldn't come back here and start his computer software Let business. me introduce him to a few people. Yeah. Who love his expertise. Yeah, but, but love him down is, here. The thing is, there are a lot of people that will love him, but the salary that he's earning in Manhattan right. is not the salary that he's going to be earning right. here. Right. And as you said, the cost of living. Right. I mean, so that transition from uh, the military into the civil sector is a major one. And what you're right. doing is, is something that's going to be profound and making things happen. Right. But the jobs and learning how to take your military training to match the jobs out there. And that's, that's why we talked about this needs to happen three to four years before you get out. Right. Mm -hmm. This is not something that right. is going to be overnight. And, mm -hmm. and that's right. something that you're working on. And it's mm -hmm. all about planning, you it's know, planning. and professional networking. Mm -hmm. um, there are some really fantastic tech um, organizations mm -hmm. starting down here. And yes. you know, we oh, really yeah. do that's see very that true. And this They're having a hard of, time finding people. And, and yeah. I think that military uh, veterans are a good, good uh, right. option A good for source, a, good, a very good source. So. Now, Vanessa, what do you feel are the top three keys to a smooth transition? It's a good question. Get ready and be ready. Get That's ready and stay ready. Okay. So, and what I mean by that is get your branding and your marketing ready. Yes. Okay. Make sure everything's up to date. Make sure mm -hmm. you have a pocket full of business cards whenever you go out because you mm -hmm. never know mm -hmm. when you're going to meet your next boss mm -hmm. or a business opportunity, right? Okay. So, get ready and stay ready. Okay. Um, get on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I can't believe we've been talking for this long and haven't even said LinkedIn mm -hmm. yet. But well, you we know, gave I'm, you a chance. Now you're here. You know, I'm an absolute staunch advocate of the very essential need for people to get on LinkedIn. Explain mm -hmm. LinkedIn to, to people like uh, old people like ourselves. <laughs> Excuse me. When we, when we, <laughs> when we didn't, I didn't go that far. I to say that you. we, when we <laughs> are preparing for this job market that doesn't exist. And what you actually need now, LinkedIn is one of the critical branding and marketing tools that any professional mm -hmm. in the global workforce today needs to be on, whether you're a job seeker or mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. um, it's about, um, it's, it's the most important professional networking platform on the planet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With over 450 million professionals engaged on it, this is how people are finding work and this is how companies are finding talent. Mm -hmm. This is how people are doing business. And they estimate. See, the thing is, when I say explain ne LinkedIn, right. I need to just, not only are you looking, the companies are looking. Absolutely. LinkedIn lets the companies go out and search oh, as well as you. That's why when I say, yes. can you explain LinkedIn, right. what you just said now is, is very key. Right. It's not a one-sided thing. It's the Absol companies are looking at LinkedIn and looking for, for staff, looking right. for wonderful people Absolutely. to bring on board. And the that's best one of talent the key on things. the planet. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the goal of LinkedIn, the mission of LinkedIn is to connect talent with opportunity at massive scale. Mm -hmm. It's about okay. doing business and it's mm -hmm. about professional credibility. And here's where I'm going to be a little bit unconventional. Um, I would, I would say to veterans today, if you are preparing for transition and you are working with anybody to support that transition and they are not on LinkedIn and they are not leveraging it and they mm -hmm. can't teach you why you need mm -hmm. to be on it and why, why you need to be using it well mm -hmm. and connecting you with opportunities, mm -hmm. walk out the room. Right. Don't work with them because right. they're not, they are not up to date with the current global career marketplace. Right. Right. And I see it all too often. Mm -hmm. I, 
I was very upset to walk into a, an office very recently that is supporting unemployed and veterans who are unemployed. Mm. And to see computers that don't have Wi-Fi access, people who are unemployed yeah. trying to find jobs and they're not How on LinkedIn do and they don't know about yeah. LinkedIn. And I still see newspapers hanging on a wooden rack at the front door. Mm -hmm. It's out of date. Right. It's out of date and it needs to be shaken up mm -hmm. and things need to change if we're going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. All right. so true. Number three. Oh. <laughs> I know, I, I, know, I forgot I know, that I know too. You, you, were, you were into it and I, I didn't want to budge. I mean, you were doing Professional networking. Okay. Yeah. Professional networking. Okay. So um, let people know what you're looking for. The minute you say to people, hey, uh, I'm getting out in the next six months and I'm really interested to stay here in mm -hmm. Hawaii and I really want to put my feelers out to people who are working in the IT industry. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, people go, man, why didn't you tell me that before? Mm -hmm. My brother's just started an IT company. Mm -hmm. So ask, be confident mm -hmm. and, um, and start thinking strategically about mm -hmm. finding your next boss or finding your next company. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, um, one of the things that in my research I saw was that the unemployment rate for female veterans was uh. higher than the unemployment rate for male veterans. Mm -hmm. And so why, why do you think that is? <sighs> sad, isn't it? Like, yeah, isn't it? You know, it I was heart. shocked, actually, when I started reading about this and re doing research, I thought, oh, my goodness oh. me. But one of the reasons is there are more male veterans than female veterans. You have to bring that into the equation, too. Oh, right. that's so, a good point, I mean, that, that, that's, a, that's a major point. No, I mean, when you, when you start talking about 80,000 individuals, maybe 20,000 are women. You know, we're, so, women are fourteen yeah, percent of the yeah, military. Saying, so you're right. right. We're not. Yeah. We don't have a huge so that, footprint. But mm. that uh, that statistic, you know, can be screwed. Mm. You know, statistics right. can make things look good or make things look bad. Right. But you still have a point. Mm -hmm. You know, the unemployment numbers in the country alarm me. They make me yes, sad I when I see that there's a, a, a correlation with high veteran unemployment. That mm -hmm. makes me sad. And then women veterans okay. unemployed. Mm -hmm. Specifically about female veterans, the, the high numbers of them mm -hmm. being unemployed is. You know, I don't know the answers, mm -hmm. and and Washington don't know the answers. Sadly, <laughs> you know, I was, I was thinking, what? Well, it's all well and good for you know the first lady to say we're not quite sure why we have such high unemployment numbers yes. for female veterans. Well, get a bunch of them in a room and ask, like right. do a study, mm -hmm. so that we learn. Mm -hmm. But um, I would I would hazard a guess that some of the reasons that I think contribute to it are that we are the we are the parents sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. that women veterans um, are looking after family responsibilities, right, so they're true. not choosing to work, or mm -hmm. it's hard to actually find jobs that fit within school drop-off and pick up, right. I hate to say it, right. um, or childcare requirements, and childcare is actually quite high, so right. often we're looking at the cost of childcare as being more than your income, right. sadly. So, it's been half an hour already. You can't believe that? No, we're really quick. I've Whoa. just been told you've got to wrap it up. Uh, uh, oh, I haven't even. So, no, 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 wait a minute. I was getting bumped under the table. I'm saying this can't be true. <laughs> 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 we're, we're out of time. We'll have to wrap it up. Um, John, would you like to share your quote of the day? Yes, I will. And the quote of the day fits right into what we were talking about. And the quote of the day is from Ed McManus, which says, "Perfecting your presentation." is the most important work you can do. So true. Right. Vanessa Perez's words of wisdom with regards to keys to success can be found on Newman Consulting Services webpage, newmanconsultingservices.com, and landing page, danelia.org. Thank you, Vanessa, for joining us today Thank and you. sharing your insights to keys to military well, transitioning no. <laughs> success. So true. Okay, and Think Tech Keys to Success. So we'll be back Thursday at 11 a.m. We ask that you please tune in again and ask your friends and family to do so as well. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman, and we'd like to thank you uh, for being here with us, and we'd like to wish you a prosperous and happy new year. Aloha! Aloha.